Hello, my friends. We will continue our journey examining the normal distribution curve, and specifically, we will look at the standard normal distribution curve. The, uh, the normal distribution curve we call the bell curve, and this we know is the standard normal distribution curve because the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. You would read this curve to say here's the mean, one standard deviation above, two standard deviations above, three standard deviations above the mean. One standard deviation below, two standard deviations below, and three standard deviations below the mean. It's real handy when you have the mean at zero and the standard deviation at one because now you have this thing converted where these numbers across the bottom turn out to be z-scores. And that makes them very, very, very powerful. Again, this is the standard normal distribution curve. The numbers are standard deviations. As such, they are z-scores. The positive numbers right down here are those values above the mean. The negative values are those numbers below the mean. So anytime we look on this curve and we see a z-score and that z-score is positive, we know it's above the mean. And if that z-score is negative, we know that it is below the mean. We can examine areas relative to these z-score boundaries. Now here's a new word, a boundary. In other words, we can set a place that we want to make solid and then look at areas coming up to it or going away from it. For example, if we set our boundary at 1, then we could go about calculating how much area lies to the left of 1. Now, since we don't have tables at this time and have not yet learned to use the tables, it's going to be a little bit more confusing, but it will make some sense. The area to the left of 1, we know that all of the area to the left of the mean is 50%, or 0 0.5000. We know that the area from the mean to 1 is 34%. So we're able to do some calculation there and say that 50% plus 34% is 84%. So the area, the 84% of the area of the standard normal curve lies to the left of a z-score equal to 1. Now, you say, well, why, why did you say 84%? Well, you remember that 0. 0.5000 is 50%, 0. 0.34000 is 34%, and 0. 0.8400 is 84%. You have to be conversant and be able to move those terms interchangeably. 84% of the area lies to the left of a z-score equal to 1. The probability that a data lies to the left of 1 is 84%. Now what that means is, is out of this data set, we randomly select the data, there's an 84% possibility that it will lie in this area, and then there's a 16% possibility that it will lie in this area. I got 16% by taking the whole area of 1 and subtracting 0.84 from it and getting 0.16, which is 16%. How much area lies to the right of 1? That would be 1 minus 0 0.5, which is this area, minus 0 0.34, which is this area, which is 0.16. So 16% of the area lies one standard deviation or more above the mean. That's pretty cool, isn't it? The probability that a data lies to the right of 1 is 16%. So if we randomly selected a data and it just, just randomly selected the data and looked at its z-score, we have a 16% possibility that it would fall into this region and an 84% possibility that it would fall into that region. How much area lies between minus 1 and 1. Now, instead of just one boundary going on forever, we're looking for an area between two boundaries. Now, let's think just a minute. From the mean to one standard deviation out is 34%. From the mean to one standard deviation below is 34%. So the area would be equal to 0 0.34 plus 0 0.34 or 0.68 or 68%. 68% of the data lie between one standard deviation below and one standard deviation above. That means that if we randomly select the data, we have a 68% possibility that its z-score 
will fall between negative 1 and 1 in the standard normal distribution curve, where negative 1 is one standard deviation below and 1 is one standard deviation above. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Says it all right up here. 0.6800 or 68% of the area lies between the z-scores negative 1 and 1. Now, I want you to keep in mind 68% means 68 times out of 100 it will happen. So if we randomly select the data 68 times out of 100, that data will be in that boundary list. Again, I want to thank you very much for your support. I've enjoyed bringing you these. You just need to master this one little step at a time, and you'll get there. May the odds be ever in your favor. You have a great day.